Welcome everyone to this video in which I am going to show you some tips and tricks on how to use Notion. I got some questions, some feedback from people asking on how to personalize their Notion systems, how to navigate Notion as a system. And I figured I'd just record a little video, show you some of my most useful tips and tricks. And yeah, I'm just gonna cover the basics here. If you have any more questions, if you wanna know how to implement things on a deeper level, do let me know. Just gonna cover the surface here. And without any further ado, let's just dive straight into it. So the first thing that we find ourselves on is this tricks and tips page that I created for this video. And the first trick that I'm gonna show you guys is how to add a quick icon to every page to make it look better. So as you can see right over here, there is a button to add the icon. Let me just remove this one. There's a button to add icon. Right in here you can choose any emoji that you want. You can upload an image or you can upload a link to a website. There's multiple websites that have a bunch of icons that you can use for Notion. Uh, but for now, we will just do this emoji and then you can also add a cover. Now, this is really basic stuff. I think most of you have already figured this out, but we'll just start here to make the page look a little nicer. And what I personally like doing is going here into Unsplash and we're just gonna say tutorial. And we're just gonna grab this little tutorial banner over here maybe reposition it a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. The next thing that I want to show you is that you can actually change the font size on your page. You can change the page width of your page. As you can see, the page goes in full width right now and you can change the actual font itself. Now, Notion doesn't allow for a lot of custom made styling. So you only have a few choices, but you can choose one that fits you best. Now, per personally, I just like working with the default uh, font. So I'm just gonna put it back to default. I also like having default size. And for the sake of this page, I also like having default width. Um, but you can style this per page. You can change things to your own liking. The first thing on this page that I want to cover is how to color and uh, style your elements in Notion. So there is multiple different ways for coloring content in Notion. One of the ways that you can color content is by simply dragging. And in this case, we're dragging over the text here and by going on the right bottom, uh, on the right top rather here to text color. And over here, we can set it to any color that we like, either a foreground color or a background color. And as you can see, now the text is blue. And over here, we can give this a background color of blue just to show how that works. And there we go. We have some background coloring and we have some foreground coloring. Now, the nice thing about coloring this way is that you can choose specific parts of the text element that you want to have colored without having to color the whole thing. The other option that we have is to color the entire block. So what we do for coloring the block is we go here to these six little dots. Then we go over to color and we're gonna say blue. Now, what this does is that it makes all the text that is within this block blue. So whenever I type a new bit of text, as you can see right over there, it's blue. Also, if I now try to overwrite this with another color, we actually get to have two different colors, but the default color is still blue. So when we change it back to default color, the default color is still blue. So the standard color within this text block is always going to be blue. Now, the same thing goes for other elements. So for example, uh, I put three different callouts here and the callout is a block that you can create in which you can bas basically put a little attention, pull a little attention towards something. Um, so I put these three little callout blocks over here. And once again, we can choose to create blue to pick blue for the entire callout block. So if we go over here, we turn into blue, all the content that is going to be inside this callout block right now is gonna be blue, right? The same goes, for example, for a toggle. If we have a toggle, you can see right here, the text is white. We go in there and some more. If we change the block color over here, let's change it to purple, everything in that toggle is going to be purple. Whereas if we were to drag here just a small piece of text, 
we are only going to color this piece of text. And whenever we add something new and we put it to default, it's just going to be white. So that's the difference between coloring the entire block and coloring a piece of text. Now, the cool thing that you can do is if you try to put the blue background and then also try to put the blue foreground, it is going to pick one of the two. So what we can do as an alternative is we choose the blue background in the block, but then we drag this text and we turn that blue and then we make that bold. And as you can see, now we have a nice bold blue block. So that is very basic styling on colors. Um, some other styles we can do with the text, we can make bold text by doing command B. We can do italici uh, italicized text, command I, underline text, command U. Um, we can do strike throughs, we can mark as code. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of styling that we can do to make our text looks different. This looks really fucking ugly, I know, but we're gonna leave it in there for now. Um, and yeah, so next on, we're gonna move into the keyboard shortcuts. And I just mentioned already some shortcuts, right? Command B, Command S, Command U. But it's good to know that everything that's command on a laptop is control on Windows. So as you can see right over here, I put shift command slash control, which means it's either command, either control. The first shortcut that I want to show you is toggling between dark mode and light mode. If you've seen my past few videos, those were recorded in light mode, but personally I like working and also designing my own working spaces in dark mode, uh, simply because I think it just looks better and that's why I have it in dark mode. But there's a simple way to toggle. You simply press shift command L and as you can see, I can go back and forth very easily between light mode and dark mode. Another good trick to have if you want to open a page in Notion, and let me just pull up a page real quick here. Um, actually, it's better to have a database entry. So let me just grab a database here. If I'm going to open this as a page, as you can see, the page is small right now. A simple way to open up the page in full uh, width, in full uh, size is to press command enter. Bam. Just like that. We open up a page in its entirety. Now, if we want to go back to the previous page, instead of having to navigate all the way back, we can use command and left bracket key to go to the previous page. And then we'll do that one more time. And we are back in the same page that we were. So command enter to open the page, command bracket key to go to the previous page. And I'll just delete this one right over here. And the last shortcut that I want to show you is um, shift command H. And this is basically a shortcut you can use to color your text. And what it does is it grabs the last color that we used in, in our editing and it just grabs that, right? So we can toggle back and forth between default and the last color we selected simply by using shift command H. Now, this can be nice if you're editing text, maybe you want to highlight certain stuff, you can easily just drag along that text Right, let's say we're going to have this very beautiful clicking. <laughs> we're going to create this orange background because we want to highlight text and then it becomes very easy for us to start highlighting text all around. Um, there's a whole list of shortcuts right over here. I'll drop the link to this page in the video description. So if you want to get all these um, shortcuts, you can look it up here or you can Google it. So there's many ways to navigate, but these, in my opinion, are some of the best tools that you can use. Actually, another one that I would highly, highly recommend is Command P, which brings up the search bar and allows us to search through all our pages in Notion. So this is also really a nice feature, right? We're here, tricks and tips. That's the page we're on. Cool. From the keyboard shortcuts, we are going to move into the basic blocks. And Notion is an amazing tool in that it allows you to work with these dynamic blocks of content that can basically function as the building blocks of your entire system. And where historically or classically you would have to program all these things yourself, Notion allows us to easily create blocks, drag them around and use them to structure our own systems. So I'm just going to show you some of the basic blocks, the blocks that I use mostly uh, but just be aware that there's many, many more that you can use. And I would definitely recommend you experiment with some. 
So the first basic block is the headers. And you can open any block simply by putting in a slash and as you can see, all the blocks come up here. But it takes a lot of work to scroll down and press heading one every single time you want to create a header. So what we can do instead is do slash H, and you can already see all the things that have an H in there, one. There we go, header one, enter, and we've created a header. Right, we can do the same thing for H2, H3, and so forth, right? So it's very easy to pull up blocks by simply putting in the slash and then putting the first letter or the first few letters of the block that you want. So let's say, for example, we wanna have a to-do, we just do slash to-do, enter, and there's our to-do list, right? We wanna have a toggle, we just do slash toggle, and there's our toggle list. Or perhaps we wanna have a toggle heading one or toggle heading two, we can type Tog, actually we have to do toggle, toggle H2, enter. So there's all these quick little ways to create new blocks, to create new content, and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but usually, can, you, can just simple, um, usually you can just simply type in the name of the thing that you want to create, and it will show up. All right, so there we will just delete that little part. Uh, another nice tool, another nice trick that I already just demonstrated very briefly is creating a new page by going slash page, right? Right there, we create a new page. Or we can create a new page by saying at this page. And then it's gonna ask us, is this already a page that exists? Nope, doesn't exist yet. And we create a new page just like that. So those are two different ways for creating new pages. Like I said, there's many, many different blocks. Do play around with them. There's a whole world of things to experience here. There's embeds, there's images, there's videos, there's audio, there's links, documents, you name it. We got the whole, whole array of items there. So do play around with those. Next one in the list, all right, next one in the list, let's bring it, is arranging content. So, if we look at this little list of content over here, it looks a little shitty, right? It's just regular laid out content from top to bottom. Um, and honestly, we want our pages to look good. We want them to look good and we want them to be functional. And as a designer, I value both of those things. I want the page to do what I want it to do, but I also want it to do it fast, easy, and aesthetically pleasing if it's possible. And luckily for us, there's a lot of opportunities for arranging content in Notion. The first and easiest way is to simply drag blocks around, right? We can drag a block up and down, but we can also drag a block next to another block. And over here, we already start seeing a little design appearing, right? We could even do three blocks, and then we can say, we want this one block to be larger than the other block, and we can simply play around with this. But for now, we're gonna just bring this back and we're gonna keep it like that. Okay, cool. So here we have a quote, which is a quote from Naruto, one of my favorite anime series ever. And yeah, this quote, I really love this quote, so I wanna give it a little body. What I can do is I can either go in here and say, turn into a quote, or I can say, slash, turn to, quote. And whenever you say the command turn to before any name of the block, instead of making a new block, which would happen if I do quote, it's going to turn the block that I'm already on into this other block, right? So it helps us transform content that is already there. And there we have it. I will become the Hokage. Believe it. And we want to have that in large because it's a really big quote. Actually, it's already in large. That's the default one. It's already enlarged. Damn, what, what, what does a man do, right? So then what we want to do is we want to actually add that this quote is by Naruto. And if we are inside a block, right, and this goes for callouts, this goes for quotes, and we press enter, we leave the block. And we don't actually want to leave the block because we want to add extra content inside of this block. Now, there's two ways that we can do this. The first way is by using shift enter, and then we add some new text in here. But 
when we do shift enter, we are actually still working within the same block, right? If I were to select it over here, you can see we have the whole block. What I actually want to do is drag a new block in there. And as you can see over here, the blue line goes all the way to the left. And over there, it just goes a little bit to the right, indicating that we're under the text now. And if we drag it in there, there we go. This is a separate block inside of this bigger block, which allows us to more easily manipulate it later on. And then we also want to actually grab a little image. And you can simply grab an image by dragging it in there. And we can even add that inside of this quote block, right? And we can style it a little bit. And there we go. I will become the Hokage. Believe it. Switch that around. Boom. Naruto. Very easy way to style the block. Now, another trick that you can use inside of Notion is um, putting two databases next to each other. And what I mean by that, let me just show you real quick, is that when I have a database and I have another database, we can't actually drag these databases next to each other. I have no clue why this doesn't work, but it's just simply something Notion doesn't allow us to do. But, but, luckily for us, there is a workaround for this, just like there's a workaround for many things in Notion uh, that don't work at first glance. And what we do is we turn this database into an inline page. So right over here, you can see turn into page. And by turning this database into a page, it becomes a clickable full growth database right over here. If we do the same with this other database, we now still have our two databases, but they're just hidden inside these pages. And these pages, we can actually drag next to each other. And then once they're next to each other, we turn them back into inline databases. And just like that, we can have multiple databases next to each other right? And uh, yeah, this can come in handy at points. Don't force to use it, but you will discover moments where it's handy. And then it's a nice little trick to have. So there we have our two databases. The next thing that we want to do is actually a neat little shortcut. We want to put a little divider line between these databases and our next header. And the way we do this is by doing line, 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 bots. As soon as you make three horizontal lines, you get one divider element. And this can really help you, as you can see over here and over here. And let's see, over here, it can help you to divide your content. So it's a very easy trick, create a little divider line, and it already makes it look better. Now, the last tip that I would have when it comes to arranging content is to not be afraid of white space, right? You can leave space between elements. For example, over here, I put an enter between these blocks. Let's say if I were to shrink all this content and just put it right next to each other, it is going to look very cluttered. It is a lot in a very small space. Whereas if I'm adding all these pieces of white space, it becomes a lot more readable. And I did the same for this page that we're on right now. Between every chapter that I create, I leave some white space. Right, I leave some white space over here. I leave plenty of white space. And don't be afraid of using white space. Give yourself that room, give yourself that clarity to focus on that content without it being super duper overwhelming. Cool, that is the structuring of the content. Then another neat trick inside of Notion is that we can sync our Google Calendar with Notion. And actually this is not a trick that happens inside of Notion, it's a trick that happens outside of Notion. But what we can do is we can make it so that any new event that is added inside of our Google Calendar shows up in our Action Hub database. I'm not going to go in depth on this right now, but if you want um, to know how to do this, if this is something you want to do, let me know and I will help you figure it out. Likewise, what we can also do is quick capture tasks to Notion. And David Allen in his seminal book, Getting Things Done, speaks about this idea of capturing ideas with very little friction, right? It's 
the mind is made for having ideas and not for keeping them. So as soon as an idea pops up, as soon as a task pops up, as soon as something pops up that you need to be reminded of later, you want to deload it from your brain into a system. And when you deload it into a system, you might have already noticed you want to keep that as frictionless as possible. If it takes 10 seconds for you to open up the Action Hub, or let's say like the Activity Zone, we go in there, and then right over here, we can add the thing. That's already too much time, right? What we want to do is have a very quick and easy way of capturing a task. Boom, just like that. That is how I capture my tasks. I use Todoist, which is another app to quick capture. They have a really, really nice quick capture feature. And any task that I add to Todoist automatically gets added to my Notion inbox. And I only have to press Shift Command D. There you go. There is a little task panel that pops up. I can type in any task here that comes to mind. And at the end of the day, when I do my daily review, I look at my inbox and the task is right over there. I also have a widget on my phone, which allows me with one press of the thumb to write a new task. So at any given time, I'm always able to write down a new task or idea within a few seconds, right? I want to keep that friction as low as possible. Just with the calendar integration, if this is something you're interested in, let me know. Um, I can show you how it's done, but I'm not going to show it now because it's going to be too much in one video. All right, which brings us to the last part, and that is databases, linked databases, and database fuse. Now, we've already worked a bit with databases, but I think it's good to revisit them because databases are the core element that makes Notion so fucking powerful. It is amazing what you can do with the databases inside of Notion. So let us just create a database here by simply typing database. And as you can see, we can already choose from all these different sort of databases. And we're just going to go with the inline database. It's a very basic on the page database. I'm just going to name it test database. This right here is a basic Notion database. And we can style this database, right? We can choose different layouts. We can make it a board. We can make it a timeline. We can make it a calendar. We can make it a list, a gallery. There's all these different options of styling the database. But I don't actually want to zoom in on the styling part. I want to zoom in on the functional part. For this, I'll just open up Illustrator real quick and show you a thing called relational databases. And this is a really, really powerful feature that Notion allows us to use. So what we have over here is two separate databases, right? We got a database on the left and we got a database on the right. And we want these two databases to communicate with each other. So what we do if we want them to communicate is we set up a line between the two, right? We take these two databases and we connect them with each other. We kind of have to make these databases friends in a way. They just have to know each other and know that they exist. Once these databases are friends, the entries inside the database, right? The pages, the entries inside the database can be connected to entries in other databases. So we're going to say, let's say this entry is going to connect with that entry. And then this entry is going to connect with that entry. And this one over here is going to connect with that entry. We're going to connect these different databases with each other. And I am going to show you why this is so powerful. So let's just open Notion back up here and say, this test database is going to be our meal database. We are going to put all our meals in here. Chili con carne, probably not writing that. Fajitas and maybe some pizzas, right? This is the meal that we're going to make. Then below that, we're going to create another database and we're going to call this one ingredients. There we go, ingredients. And we'll just put some ingredients over here. Corn, butter, tomatoes, a little bit of cheese because everyone likes a little bit of cheese. Every Dutch person at least likes a little bit of cheese. And we'll just put some onion. Now, these are currently two separate databases. These databases don't know that the other one exists. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new property here and we're going to say 
property is relation. And this is going to make a relationship between two databases. So we're going to grab our ingredients database and we're going to give it a relation to our mule database. And as you can see, the moment I created the property right over here, there is another property that showed up in the other database. And these two properties are friends with each other, right? That is the line between these two databases that we're seeing. So I'll just name this one meal database. And we'll just name this one ingredient database. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick out the ingredients that we need for our meal. When we click on this block right over here, it is going to show us all the entries that exist inside of the ingredient database. So for chili con carne, we're going to say we need some corn, we need some butter. And the last one, we're just going to type in because that's another way to do it. We need some cheese. And as you can see right now, Chili con carne is linked to corn, butter and cheese. But if we were to go into our ingredients database, we can see that corn is linked to chili con carne, butter is linked to chili con carne and cheese is linked to chili con carne. But cheese is also linked to pizzas, right? And maybe corn is also linked to fajitas. So like this, we can start connecting these databases with each other. And it gives us a lot of freedom to manipulate all the data and all the things that we gather over time. Now, as this series continues, I'm going to show you many ways how we can really utilize these relational databases. But I just wanted to show you um, actually that that is a thing. And we're just going to add some white space. There we go. And these two databases are now linked with each other, right? Personally, I do this, for example, with projects and action items, right? I want to know which action item belongs to which project. So we link these databases and like that, we can make connections. Cool. Then um, almost nearing the end, but these are the last few neat little tricks inside of Notion. Like I showed you before, we can create new views inside of Notion. If we create a new view, let's say, for example, we want to have a board view, we can also give this few unique filters. So we can say, for example, that our board view, I'm just going to call this property, and we're just going to say A, B, and C. There you go. In our board view, we could say sort by group by letter right over here. We can say group by property. We could also say group by date or group by ingredients, right? There we go. We can group by ingredients with our meals. We could say group by meals. So we can choose different ways of structuring this few. And every few has its own unique purpose. Every few has its own unique uh, contribution. Um, but it's nice to have these views there and not have to recreate them all the time. So what we do over here is we're going to say board by ingredient. And this is now just a few that we are going to have here. But maybe we also want to have a list, which is sorting by property, right? And maybe we want it to show the property also. So we're going to say, there we go. It's a different few that we have. And we're just going to press this button, save for everyone. And now anytime we go into this meal database, we can see the standard view, we can see the board view, and we can see right over here, the list view. And like this, everything we do in Notion with databases is manipulation of views and of properties and of filters, right? But we're always working with the same core data. It's always the same data that is in this meal database. So if I were to over here, create a linked database of the same meal database, you are going to see that the exact same information is in here as is in there, right? This linked database is basically a clone of the database that is also feeding back into that same data. So if over here, I were to change this name into um, French fries, there we go, add some French fries and we'll add a little French fries right over there. You can see it also changed 
in this other database, in this other few, it's changing everywhere. So the core data always stays the same. The ways we resurface this data is just going to change. And the last cool feature that Notion just added recently is that we can actually add a database few from a different database. So we're gonna say ingredients, we're gonna grab that one over here, and then we're gonna say ingredient list layout list. And we're gonna say meal list. And now we have these two different databases, the meal database and the ingredients database right next to each other in the same menu. Just put that over there and there we go. Easy as that. We now have a meal database and an ingredient database and whenever we click one of these ingredients, we can see in which meals we use that and likewise, whenever we open any of these meals, we can see which ingredients are in there. All right, that was a lot. And this was not meant as an in-depth tutorial on how to create everything yourself, but it was more meant as an inspiration session. So if you saw things here that are interesting to you, workflows that you think you can integrate, or if you have ideas of things that you wanna integrate, but you don't know how, let me know, shoot me an email, put in a reply, book a coaching session, and we can talk about this and help you personalize your own system. Most importantly, play around, try out things, go on the Notion quest, make it your own system because that's what it's so cool about Notion, right? You can really tailor it to your own needs. And I wish you lots of luck and most importantly, also lots of fun. All right, see you here back for the next video.